By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against one of my patrons. I am playing against Frederik and Frederik is bringing a Suchi Garen deck to the table and I'm going to battle him with my mono blue Timmy deck. And before we're going to the actual games, I'm going to give a little bit of deck tech on both of these decks. If you want to go straight to the games, you can do so by clicking or I should say by checking the description below. There you will find a timestamp. Click on the timestamp and it'll take you straight to game number one. Here I'm going to continue with the deck tech starting with the Suchi Garen deck. My opponent Frederik is playing with a Suchi Garen deck and of course we've seen our fair share of Armageddon decks here on the channel as well. The most famous one being Urnum Garen where you simply get your Urnum out in turn four or preferably turn two or even turn three or even turn two and then quickly after that you play an Armageddon. Now the idea of this deck is pretty much the same. You want to ramp, you want to play out a lot of creatures and before your opponent can do his thing you want to cast an Armageddon making sure all the lands in the game are gone your opponent is stuck with a lot of cards but cannot play them because he doesn't have any land and you have a lot of creatures on the board and you can simply attack now because this is a mono white artifact build there are no lunar elves so instead as we can see on this slide my opponent is using felwer stones today to kind of get ahead with the mana curve and also after the armageddon have some mana left now obviously felwer stone only works when your opponent that's me plays out a land and that land cannot be a colorless land that land cannot be a maze of if because maze of if doesn't produce any mana so he needs me to play out preferably a city uh, of brass which is of course um uh, a, a, a land that you see a lot and the cool thing is when you have a city of brass and a felwer stone then your felwer stone can give you any color mana that you want unfortunately for him i am actually not playing with city of brass because i'm playing with a mono blue deck um so that's not going to happen of course i do have a lot of basic islands so i'm sure the felwer stones will do some good work for him um he's playing with a lot of cheap creatures because then you don't need a lot of mana and the Armageddon is not going to hurt you as much as it probably is going to hurt your opponent. So in this case, me. Well, that's basically the Suchi Ganon deck that I'll be playing today. Let's take a look at my deck. Okay, so I am bringing my Timmy's Spellbook deck to the table. This is my mono blue deck with the base is, has always been for Timmy's, for Protocol Sorcerers. And when you look around um, all the videos, I have more than 150 videos right now on the channel and you just type in mono blue, you will probably find this deck in a lot of different versions. I just keep tweaking it, I keep changing it. Now at the moment of this game, I'm playing with a full place of Protocol Sorcerers, I'm playing with three clones and a Vesuvian Double Ganger. Obviously I wanna clone my Protocol Sorcerer, just have a lot of protocols there on the battlefield, a lot of Timmies, and ping my opponent to death. Now, I also have some other strategies in this deck, making it a little bit more mid-range. I'm also playing with three Air Elementals, I'm playing with the Mahamoti Jin, so I also have some muscle. Now because I'm playing this, this very slow ping strategy, I've decided to also add a lot of control elements. So as you can see on this picture, I'm playing with Maze of If. I have three in total in this deck. I'm also playing with three IC Manipulators, and I'm playing with a full play set of counter spells and a mana drain. So I've got five counter cards. I also play with Control Magic. I believe two of them are in this deck. So my idea is basically, if I'm playing against a quick opponent, I have Maze of Ifs to protect me, and I can kill those smaller creatures later using my Protocol Sorceress. Like I can ping that Savannah Line to death. I can I can ping that White Knight, or I can even I can even take care of a Mistress Factory once I have enough clones of my protocol sorcerer actually on the board so i'm kind of feel like i don't want to remove those creatures from the game necessarily i just want to stop them so that they, they cannot kill me so that's what the maze of if is for the ic is for later in the game you know i can take care of creatures but i can also take care of lands and artifacts so it's, it's very flexible card very useful and then the counter spells basically i want to use the counter spells to counter non-creature threats so for the creature threats i feel like i've got my mazes of ifs i've got my ic manipulators i've got my control magics i don't really want to stop them besides sometimes in the game my clone or physical double garen can actually be used to copy some of the stronger creatures of my opponent so i don't necessarily want to kill them so you just have to remember that that's one of my that's one of the ideas behind my deck because i've got such a control build i don't necessarily want to kill my opponent's creatures i just want to you know keep them alive and then deal with them later in the game like i've got weapons for that what i don't have weapons for is enchantments is non-creature artifacts is um you know just 
powerful spells, instants and sorceries. So I need my counter spells to deal with those uh, threats. For instance, the Armageddon, I would really need a counter spell to do something against that. And that's the only way that I can stop the Armageddon from happening in this particular matchup. Um, oh, by the way, somebody asked me, why don't you play with Surrender Perfreeze in this mono blue build, which I think is, is a great question. Um, the main reason for this was flavor wise. I wanted just to play with four Timmies and I felt that that is going to be my three drop. I don't want to have eight three drops and everybody's playing with Surrender Perfreeze anyway. But then I started thinking, wait a minute, if I don't play with this Arabian Nights staple, I might as well put City in the Bottles in my deck. So I'm now also playing with two City in the Bottles main in this in this build. I don't think it's going to have much of an impact in this particular matchup. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention it and wanted to thank the person that actually asked me that question because that made me think again, okay, why am I making the choices that I'm making in this particular build? Okay, so this is um, all I have for you in terms of deck tech. Let's now go to the actual games and uh, see who's going to win this duel. Game number one, and it's Frederick the player on the left with the Lord of Atlantis playmat, who's on the play here, casting his Savannah Alliance, and I'm just playing a single basic island passing turn here. The problem is I've got two damage here. That's exactly what happens. Going to 18, there's a Soul Ring into a Felwar Stone. So he's missing a land drop, but he seems to have enough mana for now at least. And there's a second island, meaning I can counter from now on. It looked like I was kind of doubting there for a moment. Not sure what to do. Taking more damage, going to 16 here. There's a Suchi, hopefully I can counter, but I cannot. Okay, so this is getting kind of problematic for me. Playing a Maze of If here, and now playing a Sage of Latinam. So that was probably why I was doubting the other turn. I wonder why I didn't play out the Sage then if I didn't have a counter spell on hand. Maybe I wanted to wanted to look like I had one. Um, sending back the Suchi. And there's another Savannah Lion. So I'm already on 14 here. Taking six damage by that one Savannah Lion that came in on turn one. So there's a lot of pressure here. Playing Mishra's Factory, so taking back to Basic Island, playing a Prodigal Sorceress. That's really going to help me next turn. I can start killing those Savannah Lions. But what if my opponent gets a Armageddon here, taking care of the Maze of If doesn't draw an Armageddon, I have to take 4 damage though. Going to 10. Another Savannah Lions. Wow, almost a full play set here against me. I'm on 10 life. My life total is cut in half here. I really have to start taking care of those creatures. Tapping 2 here. This is interesting because I can sack it to draw a card that's sitting in a bottle, which I don't think is going to be very useful against uh, this deck. Look at that. Full attack. At least I can ping one to death here. I can use my mace. I can also activate my factory. But there's a Disenchant in response. I can sack it to at least draw a card, but that means four more damage for me. Going to six here. But I am stabilizing more and more at least. And of course, getting that extra card. And that's a great thing about Sage. You have a better trait now when somebody plays a Disenchant or a Source for that matter over your artifact creature. Not playing anything, just passing turn. That's not great. I wonder what I have in hand here. Another full attack. Binging one to death, sending something back, deciding to block the Savannah, using the Sage's ability for one last time to sacrifice that city in a bottle. At least drawing a card from it. And there is a White Knight, but now he has two creatures. But a counter spell here on the White Knight. Finding another land here, in this case a factory. Finding an icy manipulator, so that can help me here. Taking back control of the game. But if my opponent can find an Armageddon, I'm in trouble again. So I'm not feeling really secure here. And there's another White Knight and a Kismet. 
So Kismet means that all my lands and creatures will come into play tapped here. Pinging him for one at the end, at the end of turn. Playing an island that comes into play tapped because of the Kismet. But it looks like I've stabilized. I even managed to ping my opponent here. So going down to 19. I'm still on 6. And of course this is a thing when you're playing with white only. You don't have any direct damage. There are very little ways to deal direct damage with white. There are a few, but they are seldomly played. Paying five here, playing an air elemental, and this is good news for me, so now I'm able to do some serious damage. Of course it comes into play tapped here because of that kiss mat. But it looks like I've got some control passing turn here. Having mana to activate, so I'm tapping it now with my Icy. And pinging him for one, he's going to 18 or 17 already, I see. Attacking now with the Air Elemental. And playing another Timmy. So it looks like I've gained control now of the game. I mean, he's on 13, I've got that Air Elemental. I can ping him for one, then he's on a three turn clock. Playing another Suchi. But of course, next turn I can ping that White Knight. Take him to 12 here. I can use both of my Timmies to kill that White Knight if I want to. Don't have to do it right now. I could just wait until this combat phase. Now my deck is full of clones and double gangers. Haven't seen them yet. Will there be a clone here tapping for four? There's a clone cloning the air elemental. Playing a land that comes tapped into play as well. Not attacking here. Interesting. So I am kind of afraid that maybe he'll do something. I mean, I am on six, so I have to watch my steps. Black Vice isn't going to really have an impact because my hand's pretty low, I believe. Tapping down one of his suits. He's pinging him for two. Going to ten here. No, I'm actually pinging his white knight, so he's still on 12. I believe it would have been better to ping him actually for 2, taking him to 10 and then attack him with the two air elementals and ping him for 2 again. I mean, then he would have been dead by now, so that's a bit of a misplay here on my part. But it looks like I'm going to win this game. I've got full control. If my opponent can find... Oh, only lands. He was on the land pocket because it looked like I didn't see a single swords. There was a swords. And I didn't see a single arm again. And with one arm again, he probably would have won this game. So it's 0-1 um, for me. And uh, let's go to game number two. Game number two. And I kind of feel lucky in that first game that my opponent hit a land pocket and wasn't able to find an arm again. And I think if he did, you know, taking care of my Maze of If and not, no longer having the mana on my side to use that Icy, ooh, things would have... Been, would have gone different I think but okay that's always with uh, the case with magic here and uh, Frederick has opened up here starting with a Mishra's factory and playing an island again and look at that playing a Felwer stone and there's my second island passing turn there's another factory probably a Suchi here am I able to counter this one Looks like I am with the mana drain. That's going to be interesting. So next main phase, I'm getting four extra mana to spend. Can I find something cool to use it for? Looks like I'm using it. Playing an air elemental here. Turn three. Playing a soul ring. Using the soul ring. Wow, what an explosive. Turn three here for me. Playing a prodigal sorcerer and an air elemental in one go. And that Mana Drain can just be so incredibly powerful. My favorite play actually is Mana Drain and then play Brain Geyser. But, you know, the chances of that happening are slim. And this is interesting, a Spirit Link. I believe this card came from the sideboard of Frederick. And the Spirit Link is placed, and there's a counter to indicate it, is placed on my Air Elemental. So my Air Elemental now has a Spirit Link on it. So it's pretty useless for combat at this point. 
And then he passes turn to me. Of course, I can still use it to block and kill the Mishra's factories. So Spirit Link, I always, you know, and in, in some decks it's a good it's a good card to play over a Swords to Plowsiers. But usually, I believe Swords to Plowsiers is the better choice. Um, then again, maybe he's put in just extra cards to take care of the creatures. So maybe he has Spirit Links and Swords to Plowsiers. I actually believe that's the case uh, in uh, in this game. Passing turn here, untapping, there's that white knight as well. So pressure is really mounting on me. If he can take care of that air elemental. I have no blockers, I have nothing. There's another white knight. And maybe, you know, maybe my opponent says, you know what, I'm just going to attack, dealing you some damage. And I'm just going to sacrifice a creature in the process. I don't think he's going to do that, but maybe that's why this turn is taking a little bit longer. Because he's trying to figure that out. It's passing turn, end of turn. I'm pinging, of course, so he's going down to 18. And for me, a standstill is not that bad, because a standstill is basically what I want. And in the meantime, I'm trying just to deal some damage with the Prodigal Sorcerers. So for me, that's not a problem. Tapping four here. I wanted to say maybe playing a clone, but there's not a clone. There's... The JDM Tome. That means that I can start drawing cards as well, but there's a quick disenchant. And now he's playing a Kismet. So again, that Kismet, and that's definitely going to slow me down. I do like the Kismet when you're playing an aggressive tactic, because usually then the possible blockers that your opponent plays is going to come in tapped, meaning you've got an extra free turn. I believe this artifact needs to come in tapped as well. So I'm making a little mistake here. I'm doing it now because of Kismet. And I find Kismet a very interesting card. I've always kind of wanted to use it next to uh, Winter Orb. If you've tried that combo, uh, let me know in the comments below if, if, you, if that worked out for you. The thing is with Kismet, it's, it's four to cast and it always seems pretty steep. But maybe I just need to play it and, and experience the card. So it looks like not much is happening here. I'm pinging again, so Frederick is down to 17 here. Finding a pirate ship. So I'm slowly improving my board position here. And Frederick is still really stuck on that air elemental. And I think this is really a nice example of Spirit Link not really working out. I, I have seen some decks where people play blue and white and they actually play a spirit link on their Timmy, which I find pretty funny because then you deal one damage to your opponent and you gain one life in the process. And it could be useful again in one of those decks where you just want to want to keep a standstill situation. Um, there's a Swords to Plowsiers here, probably on my Air Elemental and I'm playing a Counterspell. So Frederick being a little bit unlucky here. Because if he would have been able to get rid of that air elemental, at least that would have helped him a little bit. Or maybe he was playing it on my pirate ship now. Because with the pirate ship, I can start killing his white knights. And there's another Protocol Sorcerer. So things are looking really bad here for Frederick. He really needs something big. He needs... I would almost say, say he needs to wait until I kill his White Knight. And then he needs to play a balance. Because that would really, you know, fix the situation for him. So if he can find a balance, then he's back in the game. Or maybe a Wrath of God. Maybe he, he put that in from his sideboard. There is another Timmy. For some reason, I'm tapping four here. I'm not sure why. Um, let's see what if Frederick can do something at least. Playing a Swords now. And he's playing it on his ship. He just wants to survive, so I'm gaining four more life. And of course, that pirate ship should be removed from the game. I'm putting it in my normal graveyard. In this case, it doesn't matter much, but... It can matter, especially when you're playing a recall in your deck, which is a common card to be used in blue. And, oh, there's a clone on the air elemental. And I, I really think, 
you know, the only thing that can save Friedrich now, because I don't think he's playing with a Wrath of God, so what can save him now it really is a balance. A balance can get him back in the game. He's on 10. I'm attacking him here. It's going to 6, I believe. It's hard to see with the dice a little bit out of out of the frame, out of the picture. So there it is. He's on 6. And let's see what I can do. Or I should say what Frederick can do. Oh, this is actually interesting. He's playing a Sarah Angel, but it's probably not going to save him because I can ping him for 3 at the end. He goes to 3. Then it's my turn. I untap. This is interesting, yeah, and I, I can hit him for three again, and I believe that's exactly what happened. He's not changing his life total anymore, but yeah, that's that's basically what happened. So this time he did find his Armageddon, but it was not in his best interest to play it yet. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, this uh, this is nice, a nice victory for me for me here, 0-2. And what I actually did after this game, I uh, decided he's looking where his balance was. That could have definitely saved him in this matchup. And he's showing what he boarded in. He, he put in two Wrath of Gods, which I think is a good decision. He just didn't find them because the Wrath of Gods could have saved him here. Um, anyway, um, I've won this one 0-2. And what I've done after this game, I took another deck. I took my mono green deck and we played some more games. So you can stick around if you want to see those games um, because they were actually pretty cool. So let's take a look at the uh, mono green deck that I picked. So this is the mono green deck. Well, actually, it's not the deck. There are a few key cards in the deck. It's completely revised. I, I just love brewing revised builds. It's the, the set that I played with when I started Magic. And I called this deck Enchantress's Forest for the simple reason that it's all built around for Jiren Enchantress. And all, the way I imagine it is that she's sitting in the middle of the forest and all the creatures in the whole forest is listening to her and abiding her way and protecting her. And so she's got powerful creatures like Thicket Basilisk and some of the other creatures, Force of Nature, of course. But when you're building a Vajuran Enchantress deck, there's always this feeling of plenty. So you want to just have a lot of enchantments in the deck. So obviously I'm playing with Lure because Lure and Thicket Basilisk is a really nice combo. I'm also playing with Wild Grove. I'm playing with Aspect of Wolf. Just a lot of um, nice classic enchantments from the revised era. So that's kind of the deck that I'm bringing to the table now. And, uh, and let's take a look if it uh, if it stands a chance against the uh, Suchi Geddon build. Okay, let's let's see what we can do. Game one here. I've already played a basic forest. It seems there's a Savannah lines played by Frederick. So it's going to be interesting to kind of see how the Suchi Geddon deck will do against my mono green build, the Enchantress build here. Another Savannah line, so that's a quick start. That's something you don't want to see. Tapping three here, and there's the Fujuran Enchantress. Hopefully it can stay on the board. I will probably have to take four more damage here. Let's hope that my opponent cannot put more creatures on the board here. Going to 14. Looks like he's stuck on two lands, so that's good news for me, and he's passing turn. And let's see what I can do. Playing an Aspect of Wolf. A very interesting card here. Drawing a card because of the Fujuran Enchantress. Aspect of Wolf gives plus one, plus one for every two forests you control. So right now it's two forests. It's very capable of blocking one of those Savannah Lines. Another thing that it does is when you have an uneven number of forests, power it's rounded down and toughness is rounded up. So that's why this card can be very confusing. For instance, now if I get a fifth forest. Okay, I'm explaining the whole card. And he's disenchanting it. Well, thank you, Frederick. Uh, <laughs> anyway, if you want to know how how, how Aspect of Wolf works, uh, j j just read it. it. It's very interesting. It's, it's got one of those old school rounding up rules. Anyway, playing a uh, forest here, tapping it for some reason, playing a soul ring, tapping five here, finding a thicket basilisk. That's actually perfect for me right now because at least I have something to block those Savannah lines with and the... Uh, the White Knight. So it probably means if Thicket Basilisk can stick around, I have something to block with. I'm already on 10. You know, my life's cut in half. And Frederick is playing his third planes. Does have a mana problem, but he has found his third planes. Of course, he doesn't need a lot of land with the deck that he has. Let's see if he's going to actually play something. And remember, my Thicket Basilisk is everything that gets blocked by it or blocks the Thicket dies. The nice thing about the wording on the Basilisk is that it doesn't even have to deal any combat damage. So you can make a pretty killer combo 
if you uh, use a maze of if and a thicket basilisk and a lure, which is quite nice, and you attack with the thicket basilisk with the lure on it, meaning that your opponent has to block the thicket with all the creatures that he has, and then you take the thicket basilisk out of combat with your maze of if, and because it doesn't have to deal any damage to have its effect, all the creature creatures of your opponent die. Which is pretty crazy. It's pretty nuts. Then again, it is one of those three-card combos. And if your opponent simply has some removal for the Basilisk, then the whole show is over. Anyway, it looks like Frederick is in the tank here. He is attacking with everything, so willing to trade, or maybe he has another trick up his sleeve. Blocking the White Knight here, having to take four damage, going down to six. And maybe he's going to put some more pressure on the board. That's exactly what he's going to do. At least it looks like it. Untapping those lands again. If he can get another White Knight on the board, he's not doing it. Okay, interesting. Oh, look, there's a little bit of a, of a connection loss here. Taking on my turn again. Tapping for six. Playing a Desert Twister over a land. Interesting choice here maybe it would have been better to simply keep the desert twister in hand then again i know he plays with sarah angels i know he plays with armageddon's so i have that information so maybe that's why that's also why i'm taking back that forest by the way Ooh, this is bad news for me i am gaining two life but i'm losing four taking care of the thicket basilisk with that swords to plowsiers I need a creature bad. I need a blocker. I need something. Interesting choice again. Oh, exactly. I thought, am I taking a land? I'm not taking a land. Taking care of the Savannah Lions. Just for the sake of staying alive. But it looks very bad for me here, this, this game. There's a disenchant on the Soul Ring. Passing turn. Looking at my cards. <laughs> I remember this part of the game being, I have to be honest here, I was a little frustrated because it looked like, you know, the game just wasn't going my way. I wasn't drawing anything despite the fact that, you know, Frederick has mana issues. Uh, and, and the game is just not, the deck is not working out the way you want it to work. I don't know if you, if you know what that feels like. It can be a little frustrating. I don't mind losing, but when the game is really underperforming, or the, my deck is really underperforming, that's that's a little bit frustrating. Um, blocking the Savannah line here, I think. So both creatures die. There's a Suchi on the board. Ay ay ay! It's looking bad for me. Passing turn here. Ooh, playing an Armageddon. Oh, look at that! A crumble. Wow. So this is actually not really that bad for me. Because the crumble takes care of the switch, he does mean that Frederick's taking four more life, going to 24. I'm on two. I mean, chances of me winning this are, are close to zero, but still I'm in it. And look at that. That's a great way to come back into the game. Playing a Lanower Elf there. Attacking here. Dealing my first damage. He's on 23. Playing my second forest. But that factory is another problem for me. What can I do? Finding a Fajurn Enchantress. Next turn, if he attacks, that's what he does. I have to jump it here. Passing turn. Playing another forest. Playing a lure to draw a card. Just trying to stay alive here. Finding another Lanawar Elf. Oh, and this is difficult. He's probably going to attack again, so then I have to jump lock again just to stay alive. Blocking on the Lanawar Elf. So I want to keep that Enchantress, hoping to be able to draw some cards. But it looks like I'm not finding anything useful, having to pass turn. Attacking now, I have to... S oh, a Crumble! Wow, <laughs> that's so interesting. And crumbling a factory really feels great, because your opponent doesn't even gain life. Playing an Aspect of Wolf, forgetting to attack here, should have attacked, because my Fajern Enchantress is now a 2-4, so it can actually deal some damage. There's a disenchant on the aspect of wolf. Drawing a card for turn here, not finding anything. And I really think that I need to 
go in and you know check my green deck check if it's balanced it, it, it looks a little bit unbalanced here but at least i'm still alive two life here finding another lure drawing another card finding a wild grove drawing another card so i've drawn like four or five cards out of this enchantress so at least that part of the deck is kind of working tapping five finding a cockatrice that's great i can use the cockatrice to block the savannah oh, yay, 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 yay. that's not what you want to see going to four here and sword supplies are just so powerful i'm on two i mean for me now at this point i just want to stay alive as long as possible playing elfish archers drawing an extra card from that lure playing a forest don't think that's a good choice though i should keep the force because i'm playing against an armageddon deck maybe i want to play a force of nature or something look at that a white knight my turn again untapping everything here playing another forest and again i think i should keep those in hand Ooh, interesting playing a desert twister Oh, attacking with the lure. He has to block, of course. So that's kind of nice. I've cleared the board here. Am I going to be able to get back into the game? I mean, I'm already in the game, but can I actually win this one? I mean, he's still in 23. Passing turn here, it seems. Taking back the forest, I keep telling myself, don't play out any more lands. He's, he plays with Armageddon's, don't do that. Keep it in hand. He doesn't play with Mind Twist. I'm just so used to playing against Mind Twist. I just want to pour all my cards on the, on, on the battlefield. Look at that. He's found four mana now. That means he can play Suchi if he can find it. Four is dangerous here. He's got a handful of cards. What's, what's in his hands? I really wonder what's in his hands. Finding planes number five. Tapping. Will there be a Sarah Angel? Ay, there's a Sarah Angel. I, I think this is it. it. I need to take care of the Sarah Angel. I need like a Desert Twister. Finding a force of nature. That's not going to help me. And there's the spirit link to make matters worse. And bam, Fredrik, you've won this game. Uh, let's continue to game number two and uh, see if I stand a chance there. Game number two here about to start. Fredrik winning that first one. I was really surprised that I could actually stay alive. And look at that. It looks like Fredrik is taking a mulligan here. And I'm opening with a wild grove turn one. So that's pretty good for me. So Fredrik starting with one card less here. But it looks like I cannot use the three mana to play my Fijurn Enchantress. That's of course what you hope on. At least I'm finding here and turn three passing the turn afterwards. My Fijurn Enchantress now in the game. Look at that. Another Mistress Factory. Wow. Taking four damage here. Going to 16. What can I do? Tapping for five. Will there be? Yes, there's the Thicket Basilisk again. We saw the Thicket also in um, game number one. I believe it was Swords in that first game. There's a first white mana. Maybe it's going to happen again. Can attack as well, of course. Pump it up to 4-4 four, four to kill the Thicket and trade it for a factory. And it looks like I'm not doing anything. That's bad news for me. There seems to be a little bit of a issue with the lights there on Fredrik's site. Tapping three, playing a lure. So at least that helps. I don't think I should attack, actually. Drawing an extra card from the Enchantress, by the way. I am actually attacking. I think that's, that's a mistake here. Because that means I need to take, like, five damage next turn. Maybe even six. Of course, I take care of the Savannah line. That's nice and everything, but it's not ideal. Taking five damage here, going to 12. I 
And let me know in the comments below if you would have attacked with the thicket in this situation. And let's see, getting six land here. I could play a force of nature. I am attacking. And there is a force of nature. That is pretty cool. That is what you want to do when you're green. You want to play big creatures. And force of nature is just a beautiful thing to cast. 8-8 eight, eight, trample. But against an Armageddon deck, very risky. Ah, there's a spirit link on my force of nature. Ah, that's just really bad. That's really bad. At least it can still block with it. Playing an aspect of Wolf now, drawing a card. That means that my Thicket Basilisk, Basilisk is now 4 7. So Fredrik is going here to 13, playing another forest. But if Fredrik can now find an Armageddon, I have some I have serious problems. Playing a Kismet to kind of slow me down here. Passing turn. I have to tap down those four forests for my force of nature. Attacking, and the force still help because it means they pump up my Thicket Basilisk more and more. Remember, it's uh, for every two forests in play, it gains plus one, plus one. So that means it's plus three, in this case, plus three, plus four, because the toughness is rounded up. So that means it's... Uh, oh, this is killing! This is killing! This is killing. This is what I was afraid of because now what happens is I cannot pay my force of nature tax. So I have to take eight damage and my opponent Freda gains eight life because of the spirit link. So that means he will go to 16. He will double his life total. And I can attack, but that doesn't matter because he can take the damage because my thicket loses all all the pumps from the forest, from the aspect of wolf. So it means I, I lose. I think what we can, what, what I can learn from these games is that um, force of nature against Armageddon, it, it doesn't work. Of course, I knew that already, but still, you know, one can, one can dream. Um, do you have a build with force of nature? Because I really love force of nature. Can you please let me know and let me know if it works for you and, and how you're working with force of nature to make it work. I personally have been thinking about combining force of nature with sort of the ages. Um, let me know if you think that's a good idea. Really curious uh, to hear your brewing efforts. Um, anyway, I would like to thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. And I, of course, would like to give a special thanks to Frederick. Not just for the game, but also by being my patron, because the support from patron really helps me to, you know, to get more funds for the channel, to keep the channel going. I'm now looking on to buy a light set that I can use when recording uh, at tournaments. So I'm kind of saving up for that and all the patron support really, really helps. Talking about the patrons, let's go to the end credits where we see all the supporters of the show, all the patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het dus vind het dus zomaar gezien.